Let's see if this works today. How's everybody doing? Hey, Blondie. How's it going? I think I got seven of you on here. Hey, Jill. Hey, Blondie. Let's see. Let's see if y'all can. Hey, Brooke. How's it going? Hey, go kart. How's it going? Everybody ready to do some medical coding today? It's TGIF Friday, right? Good to see you all. I did not get the 2024 book. I'm so jealous of you. <laughs> I did get an email that says, um, it's coming. We'll get you tracking soon, but... That was all I got yesterday. Happy Friday, happy Friday. How's everybody go doing? I never got any tracking, it just showed up. You're so lucky. That's awesome. There is not a game tonight. We had a football game last night. They won 60 to nothing. The team from Yermo, which is like Mexico, it's really close to the Mexico border. They drove up all the way from there because you remember my boys went down there um, on Tuesday and played there. Well, that team drove up here yesterday and we played last night. So, we won. Yay. So, no, no, lie, no, uh, Travis is over at a friend's house hanging out, and then James is here. So, it's super quiet in the house right now. It's like dead silence. Even the birds are quiet outside in the backyard right now. So, yay. I'm so glad y'all are here with me because it's lonely without Travis here because it's so quiet. But I do have some practice questions tonight. E&M, anesthesia, and I don't know what all. Let's see what we got going on. Let me see. Where is the, here we go, Word document. There we go. There's our first question. 60 to zero on a football team <laughs> game. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's insane. 60. Yep. Hmm. 24 of you on YouTube and only five on TikTok. Let's see if we can't get some practice in. Remember, guys, to go to the CPT codes first. Try not to read the question. Let's go see. Let's make a plan. <clears throat> so looking at these answers, I like the fact that we've got 37 and 34. They're the closest numerical numbers that are the closest. So I would run to those two first. 910. Blondie, you always hit me up with those always questions. Always questions. 
there's, you know, exceptions to the rules, of course. Um, I want, like, for Medicare, I wonder if we can code those codes for Medicare when we use the HitPix codes. So always is always a tricky thing with medical coding. If your patient is commercial and there's no mention of Medicare, for sure, for sure, you're going to need an administration code, whether it's... If it's an immunoglobulin, you know, it's a different administration code, but yeah, it's to pay for the syringes, the, you know, the medical assistance time, the documentation of the lot numbers and keeping track of all that stuff. So yeah, with an asterisk. So be careful. Different payers won't allow administration codes. Sometimes it's the only code you can give. We used to give VFC vaccines. They were vaccines we got free from the federal government. So people with insurance plans that didn't cover immunizations due to religious reasons or whatnot, that they don't want to cover vaccines, um, or patients that are cash pay patients that didn't have any insurance, we would use free vaccines from the federal government. So they're the same as what we ordered and paid cash for, but um, sometimes you don't even build the CPT code. You only build the administration code. So real life stuff is totally different than the exam. Now on your AAPC, CPC exam, yes, you will always have an administrative code with the vaccine code. <laughs> You've been hearing contradicting things about MDM and prescription drug management. Yes, sure can, Brooke. And that's probably some of my fault um, with the conflicting information. But in general, I have a way of, you know, 99% of the time how I handle prescription drugs is a partic particular MDM. But there is more underlining, confusing stuff that is really going on in the makeup of that MDM that I'm not explaining 100% that is probably causing your confusion. But, um, yeah, we can do that. Where is this? Okay, 910. Let me get through with this question first. 910. 910. 3, 4, and 3, 7. We got a reflex test and a function test. What did we get ordered today? Ordered was a function test. So I would just pick B and move on to my next question is how I would do this one. Because reflux, Function, just search for those, and we got what was ordered. Easy peasy. Okay, MDM is made up of three elements. Problem list. risk, oops, data, and then risk. The way I try to remember the MDM for prescriptions, if we have no RX or OTCs, like just go home and take Advil or Tylenol, I know that that equals 
minimal. If it's a seven to 10 day Rx, I equate that to an overall MDM of low. If I know we're dealing with 30 day Rx refills or giving that prescription, I know that is moderate. And then if I'm doing IV drugs, like you know, chemotherapy, uh, Demerol, whatever, then I'm high. There are things going on in this that make this, meaning that the problem for this particular, for this, if I was going to bill a 99212 for this, so that equals a nine nine two not a not a two one two a two this would be I'm sorry guys I'm moving you around on ticky talk I was going to bill a 99202 for this. Or R. Yeah. 99212. <clears throat> it means that their problem list that they came in with could be. In and itself, it could be a, um, a self-limited minor problem, right? It's going to be a minor problem. Now, the Rx that I wrote is moderate for risk, right? because I wrote a prescription. Now, the data that I would have reviewed for telling a person to go use Tylenol over the, over the counter is again gonna be either none or minimal, right? Because there won't be a bunch of x-rays ordered or um, CT scans or anything like that. So, our guideline is tied to this. Our guideline is two of three need to match. Uh, if I could spell guideline right. Um, two of three need to match. Here, our problem list is a two, is an O2 or a, or a 12, right? And our Rx that we wrote is moderate, so that doesn't match, but our data matches because it's none to minimal. That's how we get to equal our very straightforward, I guess is what you want to call it, medical decision making, right? That's how we get that. This one, to bill low for a seven-day Rx, we know in that chart on page eight that we could probably have for a, for, for a seven-day Rx, we've got an acute illness, right? So acute illness, so for our 99213, or 203, 99213 equals an acute illness, which equals a um, low, right? And then our Rx that we write for 7 to 10 days is, again, moderate because that's high. 
risk, but our overall data for writing a seven-day Rx might be a chest x-ray or a urinalysis, um, but still that particular ordering those two things is still going to make our our data low. And if we go off of our guideline um, that equals two of three, not or, match, then we've got our low problem list and our low data to throw out our moderate Rx so that we can keep our low overall MDM. Overall. Is that making sense? Um, <laughs> what is the yellow star compared to green? Yellow star compared to green. Oh, Rosalie. I don't know what the yellow star is. Then for moderate 30-day RXs, if we're going to keep patients on 30-day prescriptions for all their life, we know we're doing 99204 or 99214, which means our problem, P-R-O-B-L-E-M, problem is chronic. Right, they're going to have a chronic illness that we need to keep track of, um, or an undiagnosed, unknown problem. Um, probably chronic problems, probably two problems, right? Two chronic problems we're writing hypertension and cholesterol medicines, or diabetes and high blood pressure medicine. They got problems or chronic, um, which is moderate problem list. Then writing the 30-day RXs is moderate, right? And then the data reviewed, which could be more items. We could end up having three kinds of items. We could have a UA, uh, a chest X-ray, and also an ultrasound to review, which might be all moderate too. Or even less, we could have less things that could be low, but our problem list and our data or our risk, even alone, our risk for keeping them on um, 30-day prescriptions for the rest of their lives, you know, it affects your kidney, it affects your liver processes. It's a daily, everyday thing. Your body eventually gets immune to it. Um, there's a higher risk. Risk will be moderate, too. So we only still need two of three to match for our guideline, but it still we will end up having two of these to match. Of three and then our high uh, list or your data or your risk probably for major surgery those kind of things two of them will eventually match even that IV drug use that throws your drug risk up into high so now you can see what what we're talking about and how it can get confusing you know that rx no matter what whether you write seven days or 30 days is always going to be moderate unless you're doing iv drugs then it's going to toss it into high but you can't bill a seven day prescription as moderate visit when the problem list is low and the data reviewed is low. You have to downgrade that Rx. But any, anyway, I don't know. Hopefully, I try not to talk too much to make it all more confusing than it is, but hopefully 
That makes more sense. <laughs> Is it not working again? Oh my God. They're killing me. Killing me with this internet stuff. Let me check my settings. Thank you, Jill. Um, but yeah, it's freezing and I've got nothing but red on my internet. And it may be because it's Friday night and too many of my neighbors are on the internet right now. I don't know why we don't share. I pay for my own internet service pay for the highest gigabyte wattage that they have. They won't let me have two accounts where I could just have my own account and none of my TVs or washing machines or whatever would be on it. I just need to go get some um, maybe I should go get I've been trying to get the the satellite from Elon Musk. Maybe that would work. Oh, jeez. It's still showing red on my end, so it's just going to freeze again, too. Oh, yeah, those stars is what she's talking about, blue and green. Oh. NR came in on the live to say she passed her exam this morning. Congratulations. That's awesome. Great to hear. Oh, I have green. I have green on my internet right now. <gasps> okay, 
my fingers are crossed and I'm going to hope that this is better. I hope y'all heard all of whatever I was saying and then that makes more sense about some of the conflicting information on MDM. Anytime you tell a patient to take any medicine that's moderate just for that prescription part of that, but your data reviewed and your problem list influence whether you can still bill that moderate. And most of the time, no, we end up going low or even minimal, depending on the problem list and the data that needs to be reviewed. I've got a question up. Blondie, let's see if we can keep it going. It's red again. Ugh. Make sure James is off the internet and see if that helps. Turn my phone off the internet, see if that helps. What about something for your elbows? Yeah, tell me all about it. All right. Yeah, they're all off the internet. They're all going outside to ride their scooters and stuff. So we should be good. We should be good. I hope this works out. Yeah, you know, even Tylenol affects your liver. So you want to be careful. Anything that you tell a patient to take is going to adjust their bodies, you know, homostasis, you know, whatever. Tylenol and Advil don't actually fix the pain, but they prevent your neurons from lighting up when it hurts. It didn't fix the hurt. It just makes you not feel it so it's weird it's still a risk there's still something there that's causing the pain right so ooh, why is the chat not showing up on the screen that's really weird Let's see what's going on with chat I don't know why it's not working, but hopefully you guys can see it. Anybody have a possible answer to this question? They want to give us a possible answer? Nine three. Perfect. That is C. Correct. Good job. What about this one? There goes chat. It just seems to disappear every so often. It's really weird. Okay, good. 
C is not an answer or D for this one. Check again. Thank you for the 96 likes. What do you guys think? So, let's see, 96460. Remember, you want to code out to the highest specificity, too. Don't forget about that. Are you a J09 or a J010? If you're confused on your CPT codes, that might help you. Are we an influenza due to other or are we an influenza due to certain? If you look under J10, the excludes one says due to avian flu. And it tells you you must code the J09. So that helps you eliminate these two answers if the CPT codes are too confusing. Then you've got it down to a 44 and a 40. There you go. B is the answer. Perfect. Good job. Cardiovascular. We've got two that have 28, I'd start there, see what's going on there, or we could do our modifiers. What's our modifier 58 and 78 mean? Fifty-eight is staged. Seventy-eight is a complication. Did we have a staged procedure? 
it says here the patient was scheduled to return for surgery. The patient had a heart catheterization earlier today, showed a hazy lesion, could be a clot, they didn't know. They decided to go on and schedule for surgery. So it sounds like it is staged, right? They had to do the cath first and then come up with a game plan. It doesn't sound like there's a complication due to the heart catheterization. So we can get rid of A and D. That helps out. Now you just need to know, are you a 33 or a 28? Or if those are confused, see if you're a 78 or a 73. Our differences between our nine nine or nine two nine three three. Ooh, these codes will be on your exam too, so be careful. R28 includes an angio. R29 one of them's intra, one of them's coronary for each additional. Did we do transcatheter or transluminal? Transcatheter or transluminal? Hey, move it. Sorry, yelling at the cat. B guys. C. Perfect. We got our modifier for our 58 and all they had to do was remove that clot. Perfect. What about 925s? They're all in a row. I'd run straight to the 90, the 925, 90. Nine two five ninety. Hearing. Are we mono? Bi. Mono or bi is first thing to deal with. Do we do one or two? Looks like just the left, right? Looks like just the left. It's 
So we want to get rid of all the buys. So the three isn't there. Two is there. It's good. The one needs to go. The 90 is okay. The four is okay because they're all mono. What did we do? Did we do electro or did we check hearing? Do we use any kind of electro? They took a history. They took an exam. Looks like they just did a hearing aid check, right? No electricity. And since they did do the examination, we can match that up with the one that says A, because it's the only one that has the examination. Yep. Perfect. Allergy injections. Gotta love the allergy injections. The 49 and the 45 are closest together. We did a prepare the vial for a single stinging venom, and it contains five doses. So we know C is for this one, right? We've got two in the 44s. This one's in 42. This one's in 43. So I check out these 44s first. 944s. Nine, four, nine, four, Nine four four fifty breathing, and then our fifty two is high altitude. What did we do today? Did we do anything for high altitude? I don't think so. I think it's all breathing. Did we do high altitude? We did do high altitude, yep. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Double check that you did a good word search. Yep, we're gonna be high altitude. Yep. Love it. Anesthesia. Remember, if the CPT code already has a patient's age in it, then you don't need these codes, only if the CPT code does not have them in there. So let's see. If your patient's over 70 or under a year old. So let's go see.
Are we a 10 or are we a 20? Zero, zero, 002 20 or a 10 intracranial are we doing inside the skull non specific or are we doing a shunt we're doing a shunt so we know we're going to be the 20 does mama or child have an age in it nope it does not our patient is 70 and older, so we would need our qualifying circumstance code, so we would pick A, I bet. Yep. Now, how a 74-year-old person could be a P1, I don't know, but here we go. about this one are we a 30 or are we a 60 let's check this one out Ooh, these might be on the exam be sure you know Anesthesia for 0, 1, 8, 10, 20, 29, 30, 40, and 50. They might be on the exam. All right, 30 is for an open procedure. 60 is for veins. Are we dealing with veins or are we dealing with the fracture? We're dealing with the fracture. So we know we're going to be a 30. So we can get rid of those. This is the question somebody was looking for yesterday. <laughs> Did we use QS? What is QS? Be sure and move those modifiers from the HIPPIX book over here. It's MAT for monitored anesthesia. We did use it right here. That means C is our answer. See, we got the 272s. Let's look at that. Zero, zero, one, 172. Cleft palate. Is that what we're dealing with? Yep. Do we have a patient's age in this one at all? We do not. Our patient is under one year of age, so we do need our qualifying circumstance code. 72 is for our cleft palate. So, yeah, I like C. Yeah. Perfect. 